February 3rd, 2016, and uh, we are continuing our discussion on Samesar Stanza 6, Revision Part 2. Last week we talked about Part 1, and now we are going to take Part 2, <coughs> and uh, most likely we'll finish that one today. So let me bring the slides. Okay. <coughs> How to share this uh, screen? Share the screen. Share the screen. <coughs> okay, this stanza number six. Nathi apramata ke pramata nathi je ek gyayak bhava che e rita suddha kathaya ne je nata te to te ja che You see number one, two, three and four, there are four parts to this stanza. We'll see the next stanza, next, next slide that will give us a better idea. Okay, <clears throat> these four things are the main thing that we have to learn in this six stanza that we have talked at a great length. Uh, the second bullet says, eternal soul substance is one, two, three, four. Number one, neither attentive nor non-attentive. Means, nathi apramat ke pramat nathi, number one. Second thing, je ek gnayak bhaushe, it's an eternal soul substance, that's number two. Number three is Erita Suddha Kathai. Therefore, it is ever pure. So these three things, one, two, and three, are the part of first paragraph of, ex of explanation showing the nature of the Dye, means subject of meditation. What do I look into the heart, into the, um, into the, 
of the soul. What should I concentrate on it? So this one, two, and three says exactly what you should concentrate. Means neither non neither attentive or non attentive. Means the spiritual development stage is one to six is non attentive and seven to fourteen is attentive, and those non attentive or attentive phases are the phases from the model perspective. So I need to take them as a secondary. Once I make those modes as secondary, then what, re what else remains? The eternal pure substance remains and that substance is always pure. So what is a pure substance? The one which is devoid of any modal perspective. Modes are there. Attentiveness is there. Non-attentive non phase is there, but they are made secondary in nature. So my, my, our attention goes to eternal pure self. So that's the first paragraph, these three things. What we are going to talk today, Ignata Teto Tejache, one which ends up knowing is the all knower soul substance by itself. Means, number four here, that is the part of second paragraph showing nature of gne, means nature of all knowers object. Or all know when we are saying in the first paragraph we are saying that uh, you have to have attention drawn to all knower soul substance. What is the nature of that all knower soul substance? That is the second, and uh, that part we'll be talking. First part we talked last time. So now I think I'm going to go through quite a few slides, and uh, then we'll come to uh, first paragraph is done. So second paragraph we start now. <clears throat> so second paragraph says Gnei Swarup. Gnei means the knowable. Knowable. What is knowable? Is this phone knowable? No, it's an alien object. Is this pen knowable? No, it's an alien object. What is a knowable thing for me? My eternal soul, the eternal pure nature of soul. That's a one to be knowable. So what it says here, first it gives example in this paragraph. It gives example of fire. Fire is known to have property of combustion. Means fire burns the object which has a capacity to get burned. So fire burns them. Now when fire is burning, fire takes the shape of a substance that can be burned. If this phone is getting burned, then fire will take the shape of the phone. If the pan is burning, fire will take the shape of a pan. If wood is burning, fire take the shape of a wood. When fire burns wood, then it takes shape of that particular substance. Now it says, but this shape of the fire did not occur just because it was burning wood or dung cake. Wood is getting burned. Actually, it's the shape of the fire only. Oh, here is a, 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 a picture. Fire has taken the shape of the wood over here. Cylindrical shape. But what Kun Kun Swami says and what Amritchandra Charya tries to explain to us that this thing that we are seeing, this fire, this fire having the shape of the wood that we are seeing, that shape did not occur because of wood, but it did occur because of fire itself. This is kind of very difficult to digest for a lay person who does not have spiritual background. Here, wood is by itself, fire is by itself, fire shape occurred just like the wood, but fire shape of the fire occurred because of fire itself. That's what it tries to tell us. Having understood that uh, example, now, he, uh, 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 Acharya Bhagavan take us to the real thing. What it says? Fire did not, does not have dip, 
dependency on the object that is burning, that it is burning. What a fire could be, the house could be burning, car could be burning, phone could be burning, anything could be burning. Fire does not have dependency of that object that it is burning, number one. Second thing it says, fire has its own shape while burning this object. If the wood is getting burned, then fire takes that shape. If the house is getting burned, fire takes that shape. If the phone or the car, if the uh, pan, anything burning, fire takes that shape. But this fire does not have impurity, means dependency of taking shape of the substance it is burning. Agni ne dahiya krut asuddhata nathi means the shape appears to be exactly like wood. Shape of the fire appears to be exactly like the burning house. But author says that the house is different and fire is different and shape of the fire according to the house, according to the wood, according to the piece of paper, everything occurs because of fire itself. And then fire has independently taken its own shape. This is an extremely great example Acharya Bhagwan gives and that example we'll be able to now digest to put it into the soul and see what Acharya Bhagwan really, really, really want to convey by this thing. So now in the same picture that we have seen before, from different perspective, we'll be seeing this picture. Picture. This is the object. Gne. The object means this object of knowledge. Gne itle ke gnan jnan ma janavi sakai evo padarth. Koyo padarth chhe ke je gnan ma no janai. Kevli Bhagwan ne samastha vishwa past, present, future, Jani Sakai Shai. Me and you, we have the limited knowledge. Because of the limited knowledge, we only see certain things. If I don't have my glasses on, some of the things will appear to be really hazy for me. If I'm driving without my glasses, signs will appear to be hazy on the road. So I can see only certain objects because of my limitation of the knowledge, capacity of knowledge within me, right? I mean, capacity is there, but the, the presence of uh, active knowledge is limited, and that's why I see limited thing. If I'm the nuclear physicist, I know nuclear physics only. If I'm the ophthalmologist, I know about the eye only. If I'm a cardiologist, I know the heart only. And if I'm the housewife, I know everything in the kitchen. So everybody has their own limitation of knowledge. So this object of knowledge means gne, and this is the mirror, always mirror represents knowledge, knowledge mode. Knowledge mode is equal to mirror. So what happens? Knowledge mode is a mirror, and this object gets illuminated in the mirror. So what do we say? We say that illumination of the object in the mode, that means is called gneyaka. But that means if this illumination is due to the object, this is the object of a, 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 a object, object of knowledge. It gets illuminated here, and so if we believe, we believe that this object is represented in this mirror because object being present, object being present, that's why it got illuminated. If I'm not in front of the mirror, there won't be my, my, my reflection in the mirror. If there is no peacock, there is no peacock reflection in the mirror. So if this illumination is due to the object, object of knowledge, 
then there is impurity in the knowledge mode due to presence of an object. This knowledge mode, this mirror showing the presence of the picture of mirror is because of object means this picture is dependent on the object. What's wrong in that assumption? That's what I see every day. Well, there is a classical example given in the scripture that it says light senses an object. Three things are present and I can see an object in my knowledge mode. Once again, light, presence of light, object and my senses. Three things are to be present to know a to know a given object. Now, Acharya Bhagwan says, "We'll make sure that we'll refute this theory." Okay, how? If there's no if there's no light, can I see anything? If there is no light, what can I see? I can't say anything, right? Chirag, can I say anything? If there is... No, you cannot say anything if there's no I light. cannot say anything, right? Yeah. Anybody else wants to add anything? But it's still there. So the knowledge mode knows that it's there. Okay. If you're pure, it knows it's there. Okay. Let's say it's a pitch dark room. Do I see anything? Yes, no. No, no. 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 Remember, if this pitch darkness and I'm been put there, I'm in the darkness. Hello? You see the darkness. You see the darkness, right? You, I, I, you are right, Gita Ben. At least you see the darkness there, right? You may not yes. see the object, but you see the darkness, right? Yes. So, so light is required to know an object. Well, I wanted to see whether it's light or dark, and it's dark, and I perceive darkness. Okay, so that refutes that one theory about, about light. But okay, let, let's continue the same thing right now. That okay, if I need to have light to know a given object in a room, yes, I need it. Next thing. I need to have an object. If I don't have peacock here, I won't be able to reflect the peacock in my mirror, in my knowledge mode. So no, object is required. And third thing is senses. If I'm blind, I can't see anything. If I'm deaf, I can't hear anything. If I'm mute, I can't speak anything. If I'm, so all these five senses are required to gather the knowledge, okay? So now Acharya Bhagwan says, all right, now I'm going to give you, give you one example that you are in a, you are extremely tired today after a heavy days of work and you come home. Now you took dinner and everything. You are relaxed and now you want to go to sleep. So what did you do? You went to your bedroom. You close, you, you shut the lights off. Means there is no light right now. On top of it, you shut your eyes so your senses are not working. And because there is darkness, because my eyes are closed and I'm in deep sleep, all my senses are kind of resting and there's no object because I'm sleeping right now. Now I witness a dream. I see a colorful city. I am a prince. I'm getting coronated as a king today. I have a fantastic soft clothes that I'm wearing. I'm feeling that one. The fragrance of flowers and uh, uh, perfume is going on. I'm also getting food. Sweet foods are there. And 
the, the, the uh, dancers are dancing, musicians are playing music. I hear them, I see them, I smell them, I taste them, I feel it. All my senses in this dream are working and I really, really perceive all those things. Light is not there, senses are not there, object is not there. How did I know all the things? Because my soul has a capacity to know. Number one. Second thing. Siddha Bhagwan has no senses and no physical body. And Siddha Bhagwan can perceive in a given moment all the three worlds, upper, middle and lower world, past, present and future of all the universal substances at a given moment. How can he witness all the things? Because of his purification of knowledge. So knowledge is important. Knowledge is important. So this knowledge does all these things because of its own. And at that time, object is simply instrumental cause. So if I say object has to be present, then this slide says, yes, object has to be present. But when we go to the next slide, Oh, before we go to the next slide, this dog is chewing the bone and the sharpness of the bone is hurting the palate so the blood comes out and dog is tasting the blood. Blood comes out, he tastes his own blood. What does he believe? He believes the taste is coming from the bone. Taste is coming from an outside object. It actually is he's experiencing, he's tasting his own blood. Similarly, here now, the conventional point of view, let's, let's uh, uh, bypass this slide. Now, nanakar we are going to see. Nanakar means soul substance has knowledge attribute and has knowledge mode in the form of that mirror, famous mirror that we have in. And this mirror has a shape of knowledge mode occurring by itself. What is that one? This knowledge mode created shape of an object by itself. Until now here, if we see it, if we see it, we have soul, substance, we have the attributes, and we have the modes. All those three things are together. Soul substance and attribute and mode, they are one unit. And so this mode right now decided that I would like to have uh, 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 illumination of a peacock. So it did by itself. And while it was doing it, on other side of the fence, there is a peacock present in the form of instrumental cause only. Remember instrumental cause, we said we make the definition of instrumental cause. Nimit. What's the definition of Nimit we made? When an act is getting done principally in a given, uh, a given thing, then associated favorable situation or substance present, it's called instrumental cause. This peacock is simply present as an instrumental cause, sorry, and these guys, sorry, let's keep on losing that one. These guys created their own thing. Um, these guys created their own situation by themselves. Soul, attribute, and mode. By the, as a one unit, they decided to make a uh, uh, picture of uh, illumination of a peacock. And at that time, on the other side, the peacock is present as an instrumental cause. So this is the way a, a, a given reaction occurs. While we are on this, yeah, yeah, question. Hello, yeah. hi, can you hear me? Go ahead. 
Okay, I just wanted to, um, there's this motto that I, I, I think is good. Um, gne ma gnan nati, gne nu gnan nati, gnan ma gnan che, gnan nu gnan che. And that helps me memorize this yeah. idea. And that's a slide coming, probably. You probably you studied the slide, I think, you know, because it's coming there later on, you know. Okay. So, so what it is, you are right. This is the gnan. This is gne. This is an object of knowledge. This is the knowledge by itself, knowledge mode. So this object is not present here. This shape of knowledge does not go out. This remains here. This remains here. That's what uh, 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 Chirag, you said that four points, you know. So those are the things that we have to understand. Now, instead of peacock, I'm just going to take quickly other one. It is called rag, inclination of attachment. Remember four or five or six or seven classes back, we took the, uh, we had one picture in which I, I need to find it out. So we can, uh, yeah, I think you all remember. The, the, the objects, objects are uh, the, the, my, my, my car, my house, my family is an uh, uh, alien object. My body is an alien object. My material karma are alien object. And at that time, we also say my inclination of attachment, rag is also alien object. How come rag is alien object? We took that example of that, that uh, uh, abscess on my hand. I have an abscess on my hand. It did occur in me, myself. But I go to the doctor and say, take it out, take it out, take it because it just shows that this is unhealthy situation. I want to be healthy. I want to take that thing out. Even though it's within me, I want to take it out. Rag, inclination of attachment occurs within me, but I need to take it out. Why it is got produced? Why inclination of attachment got produced? There is a pen over because here. Yes. Because you paid attention to par. So, yeah. so rag has gne krut ashuddhita because it, it, it puts laksh, it beca it, because it arises from when you do laksh on par, right? No, itself is a par. Uh. It is a par. For example, this is the pen. It's a red color pen. It's very light and I like it. I like it. When I say that, I like it. Means this object is present and I drew my attention to it and that's why I liked it. So drug came because of an object being present. This is my old phone. I don't like it. And I'm due for a new phone also, by the way. So I don't like it. I'm looking at the phone, cell phone, and I don't like it. If the cell phone is not there, if the pen is not there, I don't have likes or dislikes regarding the pen or cell phone at this point. So, inclination of attachment or rag occurs when I draw my attention to, an, uh, to the uh, alien object. If I draw the attention to the alien object, that's why the rag occurs. That's why rag is called pur. Rag is called alien object. So now, instead of for peacock, now I put the alien object over here, which is a, a inclination of attachment. I put inclination of, uh, uh, inclination of attachment. Okay. Now what will happen? This being the object of knowledge, which is rag, then rag gets reflected in my knowledge mode. Rag, rag gets illuminated in my knowledge mode. Even though this rag, this rag is occurring within me, but it is occurring when I drew my attention to the alien object. That's why it's called alien object. And as a result, this rag gets illuminated in my knowledge more. And what, this, what does my soul and what, what this unit ends up knowing? 
this unit of soul, soul's family ends up knowing that there is a rag got illuminated in the knowledge mode. So soul ends up perceiving the rag which is reflected here, not actual rag. Rag is over here. Inclusive of attachment is over here. Its reflection is perceived. So rag is an alien object. A night get perceived over here. So this slide, if we can digest, then remember all this thing we are talking by keeping my soul substance as a one unit. And so activity ha happens within me is a illumination of the inclination of attachment, illumination of the rag, ragno pratibhim, ragno pratibhas. I don't know the, I, I don't perceive the rag, but I perceive the illumination of rag within my knowledge mode. This is very fine point because remember, rag is within me. Yeah, but it's within me, but it's an alien object. So my knowledge mode has illumination of that inclination of attachment within the mode and that's what I perceive. So whole exercise of this slide is for us to get a proper understanding of what that rag is. Remember, rag can be seen two ways. This is one way we saw that in my knowledge mode, in my soul's property, in my soul with the knowledge attribute in knowledge mode, the reflection of the object, alien object is there. Reflection of this rag is there. So I'm not rag, I'm the pure thing. I'm the pure thing, I'm not rag. For example, let's say that I'm a, we are Siddha Bhagwan right now. What do Siddha Bhagwan perceive? He perceives the whole universe, past, present, and future, whole universe gets illuminated in the knowledge more of the Siddha Bhagwan. So Siddha Bhagwan's his, his, uh, his uh, sphere of action remains intact within his own boundary of a soul substance. He perceives only illumination. He doesn't, doesn't touch those objects. Same way, I don't touch those rag. Even though rag occurs within me, my knowledge mode does not touch that one. So this is, we are talking, keeping the soul unit as a complete. And even rag, we just say it's not mine. We also have to keep in our mind other parts understood properly also that even though these reactions are occurring within me and alien object is away from me but I see the alien object I see a beautiful peacock and I start taking pictures and pictures and pictures I just I just become very happy I just said, let me take a little video. I'll show it to my grandkids and I just show it to them. I become very happy. So when, I, when, this, when the alien object is there, I get involved with that also in my Mithyatva Gunsthana, in my first spiritual development stage, I get involved with those alien objects. So that's why rag is mine, rag is mine, rag is mine. So same way here, um, this dog says he's tasting his own blood, but what he believes, he believes that the blood, the taste of the blood is coming from this bone. Even though as a, as a pure soul, I taste my own knowledge mode, but I believe that this rag is mine. I'm tasting rag. I'm, 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 I'm experiencing inclination of attachment. So this is the dog's picture will tell us that no, whatever I'm perceiving 
is my own self I'm perceiving. I'm perceiving my true nature perceiving. It's a reflection I'm perceiving, illumination I'm perceiving. This simply remains in an object. So having said that, we can go to the next slide. And uh, over here, uh, what is happening here? Okay, over here, um, what happened to this slide here? One second, hold it. Okay, all right. So now, <clears throat> knowledge mode creates the shape of an alien objects within. As the mirror created shape of peacock within, so knowledge mode creates the shape of an alien object. Now, when the shape of the alien object is created in the knowledge mode, then it declares the presence of all knower soul substance. How? Um, because, because what happens? When the illumination occurs in the knowledge mode, Remember, as we say that uh, uh, I am, this is one full unit, one unit by itself. When there's one unit by itself, so the soul substance is inert, attributes are inert, mode is only the one which shows action, and so substance attribute and modes only mode is active and this knowledge modes activity created shape of an object within so this one become one whole unit itself so when i see a peacock here that means i have to say that's my knowledge mode the peacock picture got illuminated in my knowledge mode this knowledge mode comes from knowledge attribute and this knowledge attribute is part of the soul substance. So each time I see an object, that means I'm manifesting the presence of my eternal soul substance. That is very, very important to understand. Each time, so if just, just look at me, look at the things right now. I have, we all are in front of TV screen. TV screen gets illuminated in my knowledge mode, my knowledge mode, which is part of the knowledge attribute and part of the soul substance. So this is one unit. So each time I illuminate anything in my knowledge mode, I publicize my eternal true soul substance. So that's very important. That's what that's what that second bullet is saying. So this declares this just shows the presence of all knower soul substance. Then the shape happened due to the self only and not due to presence of an object. For example, I'm closing my eye. I'm not doing anything right now. There is nothing in front of me. Now I start thinking, wow, last weekend was my temple's annual celebration, seventh year annual celebration. 200 to 250 people, which is a lots of people for us, they showed up in temple. And now I'm visualizing. They are doing Abhishek, they are doing dancing, kids are running around and all the things. So. Alien object is not there, but still I can perceive about it. So shape happens due to myself only, not because of presence of an object. The, the activity already finished over the weekend. I can visualize that one because of my knowledge modes capacity. Then an alien object is simply present as an instrumental cause, does not partake anything in the reaction. It simply inert way present again uh, we have to have this definition by heart in our mind uh, about this uh, nimit instrumental cause 
action getting done in the principal cause and at that time associated inert substances present is called instrumental cause. Upadanti upadanma karya thai tyare anukur paristiti vyaktinu hajar revu tene nimit keva. This definition has to be extremely clear in our mind. So, so that means the, the, uh, my shape of the um, shape happened due to myself only, not due to presence of an object. An object was simply instrumental cause. Therefore, there is no impurity of alien object present in the shape of the solid world. Yes. Here, Dunkel, can you repeat the? Uh just in medium speed, that definition for Nimit one more time so I can write it down. Okay. Gujarati definition first and then we'll do Yes. It. Okay. Upadanti upadanma karya thai. Upadanti upadanma karya thai. Tyare anukur. Paristhiti ke vyakti nu hajar revu. Tenu nam nimit. Ke je karyama bhag le tu nati. Upadanti upadanma karyathai yare anukur vastu ke vyakti nu hajri ene nimit kevai. J upadana karyama kai dakhal kartunati. Instrumental cause is the one when principal action is occurring in a given substance, then associated favorable situation and or person's presence is known as instrumental cause. It doesn't partake. It doesn't take. It doesn't do anything in the reaction of the principal substance. So that means knowing that when there is no impurity in the alien or impurity of alien object present in the shape of the knowledge mode. Knowledge mode occurred by itself, and so simply that nimit was present. Simply nimit did not do anything to the principal thing. Jnana karma gne krut or shuddhita nati. That's the same thing as what we wrote down over here in the previous bullet. There is indivisibility with all knower soul substance and its knowledge mode. My knowledge mode coming from my knowledge attribute coming from me as a soul substance. So they all those three are indivisible part of the reaction. They are simply one glob, one unit. We are trying to divide and try to understand that way. So this is a very, very, very important sentence. That's a whole crux of the second paragraph of this thing. Jan naro janai she. Kon janai she? Jan naro janai she. Means during knowing action, all knower soul substance get illuminated. During the knowing action, all knower soul substance get illuminated. How? Again, we'll quickly go through this slide again. When, when knowing action, when it's occurring, knowing, 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 knowing here, this is occurring in the knowledge mode, coming from knowledge attribute, coming from soul substance. So when there is an action occurs in the knowledge mode, that means it publicizes presence of eternal soul substance. That's what it says in this last bullet. Uh, this one, I mean, uh, this, this. So during knowing action, all knower soul substance get illuminated. How? We are going to go that one also, but this is very important. Jan Naro Janai She. This is the crux of the second paragraph. Who is no? Who is getting known? The all knower soul substance getting to be known. That's it. Now, 
we'll just come. Impurities come due to association with the alien object that we know it. Each substance remains pure. We know that part. Only impurities perceived in the mode only. Remember, impurities are in the mode. Soul substance did not become impure. Uh, soul uh, knowledge attribute did not become impure. Only impurity occurred in the mode when I put my attention to this pain means I took my attention away from my eternal soul substance and I put my attention to the alien object. So this present mode when I'm looking at the pain, that means impurity is perceived in that mode only, not into the soul substance. From substantial perspective, some substance is forever pure. Soul substance is always pure, whether that whether I'm in the uh, infernal life or subhuman life, or I'm in the um, uh, lowest form of life, or I'm in the heavenly life. Wherever I am, my soul substance remains pure. From modal perspective, present impurity is seen. If I'm considering myself from substantial perspective, I'm pure. If I'm considering myself from modal perspective, then I have impurity in the form of human being right now. It could be next time will be hell. It could be heaven. It could be a subhuman. Or maybe it could be liberated soul, Siddha. But my soul substance will remain pure. Mode will show the impurity. Okay, now, so knowledge mode illumination, knowledge mode illuminating inclination of attachment. Remember, I say that that uh, rag, even though it occurs within me, but rag occurred because it paid the because the because I myself in my mode drew the attention to the rag. And that's why drug got illuminated in my English of uh, in my knowledge mode. How? From Nanakar perspective, from mode modes perspective, or from Nayakar from objects perspective. This in the knowledge mode right now, I am perceiving. Illu uh, inclination of attachment, rag. Now, if I look from the rag perspective, then I am the rag. But when I'm looking from model perspective, then only uh, knowledge mode illuminated inclination of attachment. Furthermore, this gnana car from modes that we are talking over here, illumination of shape occurring in the knowledge mode by itself. Knowledge mode by itself decided to be a knowledge mode by itself decided to be in the form of illumination of the rag. So this illumination of the rag occurred because I paid attention there. But uh, the, the, the illumination occurred, not actually rag. Rag is object. It's illumination occurred. That's called gnanakar. But if I say that rag occurred and I am doing rag, I am doing anger, deceit, ego, greed. I'm angry. I'm egoistic. I'm deceitful. I'm possessive person. I have a greed. Means greed and me are one, anger and me are one, deceit and me are one. I made them both as one. And so that's from Gnayakar perspective. So now, if we just go again, Gnayakar, from, from Gnayakar perspective, this illumination occurred because of presence of peacock or because of presence of this rag. If rag is present here, rag got illuminated. And I just say, that's why I am, I, 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 I'm, uh, I'm ragi. I have the inclination of attachment within me. Means this one has that uh, um, uh, impurity 
in the knowledge mode due to presence of an object. Now, if you look from the other side, illumination of the, how does a, a, a object gets illuminated? We are hitting this one again and again because it's very delicate point. Soul substance, uh, knowledge attribute, and my knowledge mode, and knowledge mode has created shape of the knowledge mode according to its own capacity. And over here is an object being present. So, th th this is the way illumination of an alien object occur within me. This guy remains simply as an instrumental cause, doesn't take part in reaction of at all. All this action occurred in the knowledge mode by itself only. Now, now Gnanaka, illumination of self. Remember, knowledge has a capacity, knowledge has a capacity to know the self and to know the alien objects. Knowledge mode can know two things, self and alien objects. And that's why it is called extraordinary capacity of this knowledge mode within me, which no other infinite attributes can have the perspective, that kind of uh, 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 capacity. Only knowledge mode can know self as well as alien object. So how does self get illuminated? So let's see. This is the uh, um, this is my uh, uh, soul substance. These are my knowledge attribute. Same thing, knowledge mode and shape of the knowledge mode nanakara occurring by myself as illumination of my native my own eternal soul substance so this is this yes this is atmanubha yeah this is atmanubha yes no 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 not right now not right now i mean we are just doing the uh, the, just we are just saying swap prakasha how does it occur we are talking self illumination how it occurs atmanubha will just come in a, within five minutes so this is the that because remember if i'm in a nigod lowest form of life or i'm i'm human being or i'm anything i'm i'm, I'm any transmigratory soul this th this kind of reaction keeps on occurring within me non stop 24 7 every moment every pariyai so my soul gets illuminated within me and this is my self illumination at the same time at the same time there is an object of knowledge nay and that may also get illuminated within me. So in my knowledge mode, swa gets illuminated, power gets illuminated, self gets illuminated, alien object gets illuminated. Now until your situation comes, when you say, is this Atmanubha? See, I have a two things happening within my mode at a given point. Where do I want to put my attention? If I put attention to these alien objects, then I'm a transmigratory soul. If I put my attention drawn to this guy only and make this a secondary in nature, make this one as primary, then it's called self-experience. Did you get it? Remember, both the things, both the things are happening in my mode right now. I'm experiencing my soul constantly, continuously. And I'm also experiencing eternal, uh, uh, alien objects in my mode. Where do I put attention? And that's what the things are. This is only the thing I have to do. From here, I have to take attention away and put it over here. This is my purusha. This is what I have to do to get some yagdashan. Self-experience. Atma Anubhuti. So now there is a story. I think we went to the story before. I'm pretty sure. Child is child got hurt 
and he's bleeding. He has a scalp. His scalp injury is there. He's bleeding. He's crying. He's crying and thrashing and all the things. Brought to the doctor, and he doesn't sit quietly, so doctor cannot work. He's screaming with the pain. So, doctor says, call his mother. Mother has been called. Mother came, and mother started talking to the child in his own in his own language and started showing her affection took his head in in her in her lap and everything and then started just put her, put uh, started showing all the delicate affection towards the child and at that time she also gave a lollipop to the child now child slowly slowly stopped crying and now started talking to mother and mother says but what happened how it happened and this and that so they are talking now now one minute before he's crying with the pain you mean he doesn't have pain right now he has a pain but his attention is focused to mother right now he has a his attention is focused from here to here that's all happened both the things were present but his attention was focused on the mother and that's why he doesn't have he doesn't perceive the pain so similarly i have the experiencing of my soul non-stop but because i'm not paying attention to that that's why i don't experience it if i put the attention to that then i made it if you understand this concept you understand 17 and 18th stanza of Samesa. That's all it says over here like that. Anyway, when it, when it comes, we'll have to repeat the same thing again. So remember, self gets illuminated and object also gets illuminated. It depends what I'm looking at it. If I'm looking at the object, then I'm transmigratory soul. If I'm looking at the self, then I have the uh, 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 right faith. Samyak Darshan, in, uh, Enlightenment, Atma Anubhuti, Atma Sakshatkar, whatever word you want to use it. Samkit, Samyak Darshan, everything. Okay, so having said that, now, again, with the same picture again and again and again. Now, I'm doing only self-illumination. I'm doing only self-illumination. So, what happens in this one? I made everything else secondary, all the objects secondary, alien objects. So eternal souls, now, now, in this picture, what happens? Eternal soul substance is a doer, doer, and what is its deed? Its deed is to eliminate the self. Eternal substance is doer, and the illumination of the uh, uh, eternal substance occurring in the mode is deed. So eternal substance is doer. Mode showing the illumination is a deed. So doer, deed occurring in the same substance. That's all we have to understand. Whole second paragraph of the sixth stanza telling us that doer, deed, relationship of course, in the same substance. Karta, karmanu, ekatva panu, ekadravya mashe. Karta, karmanu, ananya panu, ekatva panu, ekadravya ma. Only one substance is having dual deed relationship. Is Kathy there today? Okay, no, it's okay, no problem. So, yeah. in the previous slide, you showed Swapar Prakashak, and here you're showing Swapar Prakashak. Here's my question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a swap. Yes. 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 Swap Prakashak. No, I understand that. In the previous slide, it was Swapar Prakashak. In no. this slide, it's Swapar Prakashak. Like, yeah. my... And you raised a very nice point. You know, yesterday I was talking to somebody, and he explained very nicely to me. He says, you know what? If my job is to know the self and alien objects. If I have a two capacity to know, what is logically what comes first? Does the self comes first or the alien object comes first? So, self is very important. So, for us right now, at this point, 
in transmigratory phase in the first gunthanak important thing i have to put all my effort for my self illumination if i can have if i can master this one up in in slide it looks very easy but if i can master this thing up then i made it no but here that's not my question that's not my question okay here's my question mm -hmm. in the previous slide you showed swap or prakasha yes in the current slide you're showing swap prakasha yes in the previous slide you explained that when you um when you make the par prakasha secondary yes and the swap prakasha primary that's atmanivo brother okay but in this slide there is only swap prakasha I don't see any par prakasha. Because, so there, because, because we are our subject of interest here is doer did relation to prove that one. So we made par prakasha secondary right now, and we just said we don't want to consider you right now. Hold it, say it, stay on the side. I want to prove that doer did relationship occurs in the same substance. Par prakasha pano is going on; it doesn't stop. Yes, it's there, but the knowledge mode. Remember, this knowledge mode perceiving an object. It is in the mode which is coming from the soul. So, soul substance and knowledge mode are one and one only, and that's why this is doer and this is deed. We are trying to prove doer deed relationship over here. I'm only two three minutes above, but it just let me give me five minutes, five seven minutes, and we'll we'll finish this one. So because you know this is really really interesting thing going on right now. Does it answer your question? Because the the interest was more the direction to be proven. Proven. You know? I understand. Okay. Okay. Now, now. So what happens? Again. Okay, so when. I know this guy. I know this guy in my mode. Whom do I know? From where do I know? It is myself only. So doer is me, and deed is me. Of course, doer is a soul substance, and deed is my mode. But it's a, it means the same, the same of, 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 of circumference within me only. So, all the relationship occurs within me only. Now, so jana or jana is here means whenever I'm knowing, whenever I'm knowing, I'm perceiving myself only. That's what he's trying to say over here in this step. <clears throat> so, during knowing action, all knower soul substance get illuminated, and I think probably this is what it, there, there are so, so many things are coming but probably you know if you study those things at home this is the crux of the things let's see let me quickly go through some slide that uh, uh, if it comes something else uh, oh yeah now in that slide we said Dual deed relationship occurs in the same substance. Same substance. Now, so over here, during experiencing phase, the knowledge mode knows the eternal soul substance. We saw in the previous slide, mode is a deed. We saw that mode is a doing the function of knowing. Substance is a doer means knower. Therefore, during the experiencing phase. Doer deed are indivisible and in one substance only. Soul by itself is knower and also knows itself. That is a crux of that slide that we talked about. Now, this soul substance is experienced as pure and has no dependency on any other alien objects. Having said that, now Acharya Bhagwan says, remember. He said, "Do or did occurs in the same substance, but even in the same substance also, it occurs in the mode only. How? Because a knowledge mode is ultimate knowing element. The, the, the knowing action occurs in the knowledge mode. 
So knowledge mode is the ultimate knowing element, means owner of the act, means doer. Deed, they're talking mode right now, mode. Mode is the ultimate knowing element. The same mode is also doing the function of knowing, means deed, means karma. That means the doer, deed are present in the same mode. Here the principle of doer did relationship occurring in the same substance and also in the same mode gets maintained. Inclusion of attachment is way outside, so that cannot be the doer deed. That cannot be part of the deed. So those are the things that we learned from before and we are just reviewing that one right now. And I think we know, so therefore, during experiencing phase, the all knower self substance comes to be known. I, I'm what am I experiencing right now? My eternal soul substance. So soul itself is knower, and it's it's also getting known. Therefore, experiencing phase, object of knowledge, that is gnai and all knower gnayak, both are being indivisible. And this is the crux of the second paragraph of six stanza. Uh, this thing probably we can go and that's it. So here we finish this six stanza. I think it took almost five months for us, but because it's very important, study the slides a little bit carefully at home. You will be able to understand, as we said again and again, I'm telling that if principles are clear at this point, the rest of the things are going to move very, very smoothly because now we exactly know what is the mechanics, what's the physiological action occurring in the soul substance. We know the anatomy. Now we also understood the physiology, how the knowing action occurs. It, what's the role of the objects? What's a self object and uh, alien objects and all the things. So it's a long way to come. But um, I'm glad that we, you, we all hung around together and now we'll have an easy ride going. Well, some size, some size, you know, so every stanza has its own flavor, you know. Okay, any questions? Uh, Kirako, can you post this video, please? I'm sorry? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll send it out tonight, okay? Bye. Right. Okay. Thanks. So, come to know. But in the reality, yeah, that's what I, I wanted to know. How I really know myself. Each time I see an object, that means I am publicizing my eternal soul substance. That kind of thing, when I create that attitude, it will be easier for me to bring my attention to the external soul substance, you know? Right? Yeah, but I wanted to know more more. Yeah, it's okay. And because it's interesting, so we would like to, work. as I said, I would like to know more. And that means we will know it. As long as you have that, uh, that uh, Thank you. enthusiasm, you'll be able to go ahead with no, no problem. You know? Okay? All right, thank you. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Uh, we will just do the uh, last part. <clears throat> Javani ke gyan se suje loka lo So vani mastaka namo sada de to ho jo Nine times from a common Javani ke gyan se suje loka lo